Good morning. As we come to the center of our yoga mats, I invite you to find an easy cross-legged pose or sukhasana. And to simply welcome yourself to your practice today with a few breaths. Noticing where the tailbone and sit bones make contact with the mat. And dedicating two breaths to the sits bones, traveling up the spine to the lower back and the mid back. You may choose to sit on a cushion as well or a block, but breathing into the mid back. Allowing the attention to roll up to the cervical spine between the shoulder blades. Visualizing a nice inhalation and exhalation through to that region. Drawing the attention up towards the top of the spine, the nape of the neck, behind the throat. Dedicating a couple of breaths to that point in the body. Allowing the attention to travel all the way up to the crown of the head. Sending some deep breaths to the top of the tippy top of the head. And now to the tips of the toes. Bringing the hands up together into the chest in Anjali Mudra. You can take one inhale before we start our class with the sound of Om. As always, this is a guided tour of your own yoga mat. So feel free to adjust and adapt everything that you're hearing in order to best suit your body. And if you have any question or if you have any doubt, then feel free to take a less strenuous option and perhaps ask, uh, ask about it at the end of the time. Moving into Nadi Sharana breath. We'll take the two piece fingers of the right hand and place them on the forehead. The fourth and fifth fingers draping down to the left side of the nostril and the thumb draping down to the right side of the nostril, not touching quite yet. If you have sinus issues, feel free to use your mouth to supplement this process. Inhaling. Covering the right nostril, exhaling through the left nostril. Inhale, left nostril. Cover the left, exhale, right nostril. Inhaling through the right nostril. Covering the right nostril, exhale left. Inhale, left nostril. Switch, exhale, right nostril. Inhale, right. Switch, exhale left. Inhale, left. Switch, exhale right. 
Inhale, right. Switch. Exhale, left. Continue this circuitous pattern of ultimate side nostril breath. Exhaling and inhaling through either side of the nose. Connecting and integrating the nervous system on both hemispheres of the body. No need to count or keep track of how many breaths. Simply following and noticing the sensation up and down the spine from the towel into the crown of the head. When you're ready, eventually take that right hand and begin making clockwise circumduction of the right wrist. Adding the left wrist. Both wrists rotating toward the midline of the body. Today I'm very, we're very interested in circles. No beginning, no end. And as we do these circle based warm ups, feel free to notice the point at which your inhale begins or the point at which your exhale begins. And see if you can imagine the point of a clock. And see if you can apprehend what time it is in the right wrist when you begin your inhale or exhale in reverse direction if you haven't already. So now my right wrist is moving counterclockwise, my left wrist is moving clockwise. The speed is up to you. Shoulders relaxed, spine long, still seated. Placing the hands down on the knees, beginning to make clockwise circles with the spine. Spine long, cervical spine, neck relaxed, shoulders loosey goosey. Sits bones mostly glued to the mat. And exploring the different shapes and sizes and speeds of spinal circumduction that you can make. Noticing the quality of the breath and when the exhale and inhale really begins, if you can even catch it. See if you can notice if you're at 12 o'clock or six o'clock or 11 o'clock. And feel the sensation of the lower left and right side bodies opening, reversing directions. Feel free to bring the shoulders along for the ride if you so choose. It's almost like you have a laser pointer attached to the top of your head and you're drawing a circular pattern on the ceiling.
Coming to center, reaching out, palms up towards the ceiling. Fingertips touch the top of the shoulders and beginning to make shoulder circles. Elbows drawing nice big circles on either side of the body. Noticing at what point of the circumduction you may be at when you begin your inhale or your exhale. Gently waking up the rotator cuff here and reverse direction. Dropping the hands back to the knees one last time and rolling the head and the neck towards one direction, keeping the shoulders nice and relaxed. See if you can connect and identify the point where your inhale and exhale commence as if your nose was the hand of a clock in reverse direction. Coming back up to center, arms sweep up. Palms touch, exhale down, Anjali Mudra. Inhale, and sweep, reach out and up. You might even look up and exhale down. Last time, arms sweep out and up. Reach up, look up, exhale down. Turn the ribs, turn the hips, turn the shoulders. Hands come down to your right. Left foot unfolds to the left, up onto the knees. Knees under the hips, hands, elbows under the shoulders, table pose. Finding a nice and relaxed and even tabletop pose here. And we'll take the hips around for a circle. As if the sacrum was able to draw a circle on the ceiling. And just like the crest of the wave on the ocean, you might identify that peak at which the inhale or the exhale commences. But realizing that every moment is a continuous cyclic flow of energy. And reverse hip circles. Coming back to neutral. Inhale, chest comes down, chin, tailbone, reach up. Exhale, back body opens, chin and tailbone tucked down. So cat and dog. Four more at your own speed.
and then cat connecting with the navel and the ribs and seeing if you can take the rib cage and just nudge it over to the right. Seeing if you can stay grounded in the hands and knees, take the rib cage and just nudge it down. Ease it over to the left and ease it up. Rib cage circles. And reverse. Pushing back into child's pose, knees apart, feet together, hips sink back, forehead to the mat, arms relaxed, shoulders, shoulder blades come apart. Breathing here for five. Wiggling the fingers, activating the hands, push the torso, hips, and core back to sit on the knees. And curling the toes under, the fingertips, push up to standing. Vertebrae by vertebrae, not too fast. Arms reach up and out. Gentle back bend, perhaps, and fold down, hinging at the hips, collapsing down. Water falling down into Uttanasana forward fold. Knees can gently bend. Inhale, slowly reaching out and up. And touch, exhale, fold Uttanasana. Spine stays long, knees not locked out, gently bend, hips flexion. We're creating a giant circular flow. Between mountain to dasana and uttanasana forward fold. So notice if at the bottom of your exhale, you can be in uttanasana. And with a very full tank of gas, full tank of air, if you can be up here. Creating a circular kriya or repetition between high and low. Hinging forward at the hips to move down. Draping over. Gently rolling up in one cycle, continuous movement. The next time your hands come up, allow them to come to your side. Bending the right knee, raising the right foot, beginning with ankle circles clockwise. Hands can come to the hips for balance. And you may turn your gaze to a steady point or a drishti six feet in front of you. Notice the four corners of the grounded foot supporting the balance and reverse direction in the rotating ankle. For more heat, you might use the hip and medial gluteus muscle to pull up the knee for a higher angle, or you could gently simply raise your foot a few inches off the ground. Either way, releasing back down, feeling the difference between the two ankles, grounding down to the four corners of the opposite foot now, and raising the knee up, keeping the hips, Torso, chest, grounded forward, hands at the hips, 
or simply raising the foot and ankle up a few inches from the mat and circling. Since we're working with the wave and the cycles, you can feel free to integrate a special breathing technique through the rest of class called Ujjayi or ocean breath. And all it means is that on the exhale, you can add a bit of an H sound in the back of the throat, breathing in and in normally, nice deep breath in, nice deep breath out with the H sound and the mouth closed. Reversing direction on the ankle. It's an option to integrate a little bit of that breath for the rest of class as you choose and gently release the other foot down. And staying on the hips, last circulation here. Feet um, just a couple inches apart. We we'll begin to make a few circles clockwise with both knees. So feet stay grounded down, being gentle with the Achilles tendon and fluid in the hips and spine and shoulders. Simply imagine both kneecaps as if they had paint brushes attached to them. You could draw some circles on the opposite wall, noticing the breath integrating the ocean breath, exhale. In reverse direction. Next inhale, arms sweep up and out, reaching up, fingertips interlace, thumb and first finger stay out, feet, heel toe out to hips width distance apart. Ground down to reach up, grow your roots out of the bottoms of your feet to get taller. And on the next exhale, send the left hip out, to arc over to the right side for Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon. Inhaling back up to center, get a little taller. Exhale, send the right hip out, curve left. Inhale to come up. Exhale, shifting to the right. Cycling through. Ardha Chandrasana on both sides. Inhale, take a lot jump. And exhale, release the hands down. Roll the shoulders up, back and down. Allow the shoulder blades to melt down to the bottom of the ribs, grinding down through the feet. Tadasana, mountain pose. And begin to introduce a gentle and playful spine twist. Keeping the hips, legs, feet, somewhat rooted and the spine gentle, shoulders relaxed. See if you can try a forceful exhale to the point of contact on either side, lateral side of your empty coat sleeves twist. And see if you can time your inhale to the center point between your left and right releases. And exhaling through the mouth, inhaling through the nose.
exhale fully, inhale, reach up. Hands parallel, exhale from feet, hips with distance apart, sink the feet back, chair Utkatasana. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, send the seat back, knees directly over the ankles, staying in good alignment with the knees. Arms can be parallel, palms down, palms facing each other at an angle or directly above. Push down to reach up. Exhale, fold all the way down with Tanasana. Inhale, hands to shins, halfway lift, look up. Exhale, release. Inhale, halfway lift, hands to shins, look up. Exhale, fold, walk the hands forward. And step the feet back. Hands, fingers spread, hands a little bit more than shoulder width apart. Feet, hips width apart. Roll the shoulder blades down, down to melt on either side of the ribs. Head between the shoulders. Tailbone reaches up and back for downward facing dog. Ardha Mukha Svanasana. And if you begin pedaling a little bit with your feet, Introduce some small movement here. Your next inhale, straighten the back. Knee can come down or not to come forward to plank pose. Uh, elbows parallel to each other, tucked in. Take five seconds to exhale down all the way to the mat. Five, four, three, two, one, ah. chin, forehead, cheek to the mat, arms down by the shoulders. Lengthen the legs, you may even pick up the right leg, lengthen it and release, pick up the left leg, lengthen it and release. And begin to connect to the three bony landmarks of the pelvis. The two ASAS bones and the pelvic bones. He's spreading the fingers, potentially moving them even a little off the mat. For a baby cobra, we're simply going to look up. Look up, open the heart. Shoulder blades stay back and down. No scrunching in the upper back or shoulders. Exhale, release. Inhale, look up. See if you can find a little bit of more openness from the chest all the way down to the first few ribs. And exhale, release. Whatever you do, making sure not to crunch the lumbar spine here. If you feel compression there, then do not flex. Do not come up so much. But if you're ready, bring the heart out and up. Look up and extend for full cobra, Pujangasana. This is a great spot for your audible ocean breath exhale. Huge engagement in the core. Supporting the back. Exhale, vertebrae by vertebrae release. Hands come down, palms down on either side of hips. Forehead to the mat. Feet zip together or hips width distance apart. On the inhale, simply look up. Hands are kind of supporting a little bit. Exhale, release. For a tiny, tiny boat, Navasana. Inhale, look up. Exhale, release. Inhale, look up. Reach the heart forward. 
feet come up and now you're relying on the three bony landmarks, the pelvis, and your hands can stay down for support or the palms facing down to the ground can float up for both. If you like, you can, if it's accessible, you can reach back for the feet for bow pose. There's a slight rocking horse movement as the breath enters the diaphragm and then exits it. Wherever you are, gently release back down. The next inhale. Push down to the palms, send the seat back. Knees potentially scoot out for child pose. A couple breaths here to notice any changes in the sensation of the body so far on the mat. Gently activating the fingertips and the hands, look up through to the middle of the hands. Supporting the shoulders. And see if you can melt the front of the chest down towards the mat. So the gaze is forward and the sternum is moving towards the mat. Another way to approach this pose would just be to quickly come back up to tabletop, maybe even take a couple hip circles. And cat down. Bringing the hands just a couple inches in front from the shoulder, point of the shoulders and melting the heart back and down. For additional heat, you could curl the toes under. Wherever you're at, support the shoulders up. Step the right foot up, step the left foot up, come down to Malasana squat, feet hips with distance apart. Your heels may or may not sink all the way down to the mat and that's fine. The elbows are connecting to the inner thigh, by the knee, but not really on the knee. So we'll be here in the last minute for a while. It's a hamstring opener, big hamstring opener. For additional support, you could take a block and place it under your tailbone right here. And you might just stay here and breathe. Or if you'd like to go for crow pose, bring the heels to touch like this, supporting the, the triceps with the inner knees, you can begin to play with balance here. And simply keeping one foot tiptoe grounded on the mat, raise the other foot, release, pick up the other foot, release, pick up the other foot, and so forth. I'll go for the full crow. Wherever you're at, coming back up through Malasana. 
Grounding the heels down gently, coming to stand up, arms sweep out, arms sweep up. Exhale, back bend. Um, sorry, palms come to the sacrum. Fingertips down to the earth. Counter stretch. Send the gaze back. Hinging forward a little bit at the hips, grounding down to the heels. Along the back to simply melt down. Inhale, pick it up, vertebrae by vertebrae. Exhale. Check the position of the palms. Make sure the thumbs, it's almost like you have your hands in your back pockets. The thumbs are connecting to the two bony points um, at the base of the spine by the sacrum. Inhaling, find space. Exhale, waterfall backwards. You may use a wall assist for this, let's see, as well. So you might actually stand like two, one to two feet away from the wall. You might inhale the hands out and up. And exhale, fingertip your way back to the wall. I'm gonna show you over here. So see me, yeah. And eventually the fingers are fully supporting the back bend and the forehead could come to the wall. And that's a really beautiful way to do bridge as well. So wherever you're at, I'm actually going to come to supine position. So it's 60 seconds, yogi's choice. Anything to conclude the movement. And what I'm going to do, is I'm gonna hug the knees in to my chest. Nice big breath into the glutes, hamstrings and knees. And then I'm actually going to support my knees into making some circles with the sacrum around counterclockwise. Coming back to that circular motion. And the other direction. Bringing the hands out to a T. Heels glued together, diamond shape, supine mukasana. Finding space through from fingertip to fingertip, from crown of the head to the tailbone. Making micro adjustments here. And simply thanking my body for today's practice. Last but not least, rooting my um, heels down to the mat hips with distance apart for some supine windshield wipers. Exhaling down to the right, inhaling back up, keep uh, knees parallel. Exhaling down to the left, inhale back parallel. Exhale to the right, inhaling back up. And I'm actually cycling my gaze in the opposite direction as well an option to do that. Noticing that nice massage of the sacrum and anterior gluteal muscles. As well as the rhomboid and neck ligaments. And this fluid and gentle spinal twist plus windshield wiper supine twist kriya. <laughs> Wherever you're at, grabbing a blanket, a pillow, eye covering, blocks, 
some people prefer to keep their feet, their knees bent, their feet rooted to the mat for Ardha Savasana. Some people like to be on their side for rest pose. Taking a moment here for the most important part of cross. Integration, in quiet time where the body absorbs and digests the benefits of the practice. Giving permission to each region of the body to relax once more. And remember that there's nothing left to be done, simply to be present. to notice the feeling. Wherever you are and however you are, see if you can bring the next breath into your belly. Gently returning to awareness of the space. Potentially bringing some gentle micro movements into the fingers or toes. And when you're ready, turning the shoulders and hips over to the left. Knees bend, right hand pushing down on the mat and left elbow supporting you up. Shifting over to a seated position. And gently bringing the hands to prayer over the heart, over the belly, on the knees or to any other mudra or position. or a final centering.
just like every wave of the ocean has a ripple, a crest, and a conclusion, the conclusion of this time cycles back into the remaining waves of the rest of your day and cycling through in a continuous flow, the benefits of this practice sustain us increasingly and deeply through our commitment. To our breath. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. Namaste. Thank you to everybody tuning in live in the future.